I've seen a lot of people out there that think that the stock market is a Ponzi scheme, and there are definitely some compelling reasons to think this is true, but I've always just assumed that they wouldn't stand up to scrutiny at all if I were to actually dig into these arguments. So I decided to finally give the devil its due, actually drill down onto some of the top arguments for why the stock market is a Ponzi scheme, and I think I found some interesting stuff. First, let's get our bearings straight and see what exactly is the definition of a Ponzi scheme. According to the government, a Ponzi scheme is an investment fraud that pays existing investors with funds collected from new investors with little or no legitimate earnings. A Ponzi scheme will fall apart whenever the existing owners are not able to bring in enough new investors to pay for the returns of their existing investors. Tying this into the stock market, dividend paying companies do not fit this mold because a dividend is paid to the shareholders from the company profits. However, if I'm thinking about the entire stock market, roughly half of these companies do not pay a dividend. So it could be that if we're looking at just this half of the stock market, maybe this does seem a little bit like a Ponzi scheme because whenever you buy into a company that does not pay a dividend, the only way you're making money is if you're able to sell to a new investor. So your profits are dependent on new investors coming in with more money than what you did. So what are investors actually getting when they're buying these shares of stock. It turns out there is one key difference between owning shares of a publicly traded company and being in a Ponzi scheme. With the Ponzi scheme, as an investor on the bottom rung of the pyramid, you only have power in one direction. You are dependent on getting a profit by bringing in new investors. On the other hand, if you are owning shares in a publicly traded company, not only can you sell your shares for more than what you bought them for, which is the downwards control, you also have voting rights, which goes up the chain. You can vote on board of directors who can hire and fire key positions like the CEO. You can vote to implement a dividend. You can vote to raise it and lower it. You can even vote on mergers and acquisitions. There is a lot of power that you have as a shareholder in a publicly traded company over the fate of that company. So you're not just in this side game of trading shares for more or less money. You also have access to a real and profitable business. Even though you're not getting access to those profits in the form of a dividend, you do have control over a real profitable business. And then it occurred to me that not all companies issue fair and equal voting rights with their stocks. If the guy at the top is getting 10 votes per share and you at the bottom are only getting one vote per share, that effectively eliminates all the control that you thought you were getting by owning a share of stock. So if we go back to the pie chart, half of those companies did not pay a dividend, but 7% of those non-paying companies issue unequal voting shares. So now those 7% of stocks, what am I actually getting when I own one of those shares? I'm not getting a cut of the company's profits in the form of a dividend, and I'm not getting any control over this profitable company. So what do I have? When I own a house, yes, I'm reliant on being able to sell that house to a new investor for more money if I want a profit. But if I'm not able to sell the house, at least I still have a house, I have something there. When I own the stock, is it just an arbitrary, meaningless piece of paper? Not even a piece of paper anymore. Is it just ones and zeros in the cloud? To answer that question, I think I have to get back into the nuts and bolts of what happens when a company goes public and starts issuing shares. When someone starts a business, they do so to make money. And there are four ways that a business owner will typically make money. The first and most common is through a salary. However, business owners typically want to minimize the salary compared to the other three sources of making money because taxes are much worse for the salary. The second way is through the company's profits. Let's say this company profits $1 billion every year. The owner can access that stack of cash every year by getting paid a dividend, which has a much better tax rate. But in this case, I'm gonna assume that this company is not paying a dividend. They are reinvesting that profit every year back into the company to grow the value of the company. So this other stack of cash is $10 billion. This is how much the company's worth, and the owner is trying to grow this stack of cash as much as possible. And the only way for the owner to access this stack of cash is by either selling out, selling the whole company, or selling little pieces of the company. And this is one reason why 
an owner might want to go public with their company. When this happens, the company's value is divided up into millions of shares. The owner keeps his portion of shares and then sells the rest to the public. Now, even if the public has no voting power whatsoever, they still are entitled to their portion of any future dividends that the owner decides to pay, even if the owner's not paying any dividends right now and they're putting all of that value back into the company, the shareholders are entitled to their portion of the company's value. Say, for instance, if the company were to sell out one day. This is illustrated perfectly whenever Elon purchased Twitter for $44 billion. At the time of the sell, individual insiders, these are the owners of the company, they only owned 2.5% of Twitter. The general public owned 17.7% and institutions actually owned 80% of Twitter. So the owners had already sold out along the way. And when Elon Musk came along and paid $44 billion for Twitter, way more of that cash actually went to the shareholders than went to the owners. So in the event of a sellout, it doesn't really matter if you don't have ownership or it doesn't really matter if you don't have voting rights, I should say. You definitely want the ownership, but what if a company never sells and never issues a dividend? So let's revisit our pie chart where we eliminated half of the companies that pay a dividend. Of the remaining companies, 7% of those do not give a fair and equal voting share to stockholders. And then of that 7%, of that tiny percentage, maybe there are some companies that never pay a dividend, never sell out and just dwindle and die eventually. I think those companies would be better described as just bad investments. And it's much easier to deal with bad investments than it is to visualize the entire stock market as a giant Ponzi scheme. Fortunately for us, with publicly traded companies, all of the financial information is out there. We can look and see what are their profits, what are their free cash flow. And I do this right here in this video where I analyze publicly traded companies to see if they're a good investment. Check it out. Catch you on the flip side.